Hello everyone, my name is Kond and in this video I will take you on a journey through the six levels of Dark Souls Iceberg. The Iceberg was originally posted on Reddit in August 2020 by a user called Santier, so shout out to him for putting in work to make it. I don't like wasting time on too long intros, so let's get started. Blighttown Wheel Dog the wooden elevator in Blighttown is run by a flaming attack dog. This detail is pretty easy to miss, especially on your first playthrough, however most seasoned players know this one. Also, the dog cannot be killed with any weapons. Great Hollow Falling Basilisk As you enter the Great Hollow, you will always receive 400 souls. This is caused by a badly placed basilisk who spawns out of bounds and falls to his death into the void. What a poor guy. Duke's Archives Whispers in the Duke's archives you can sometimes hear a very faint sound of whispers coming from bookshelves. Unfortunately, so far no one was able to make out what they're saying. Aiming with binoculars. Since it's pretty hard to aim with crossbows in the original game, due to the lack of crosshair, you can use binoculars to enhance your view and make it a bit easier. Solar is the Cartus Sandworm. Cartus Sandworm is an enemy found in Dark Souls 3, in ruins of Lost Isolith. This theory states that Solar got infected by the Sunlight Maggot and died in the ruins, and this sandworm is supposed to be the maggot that grew a lot bigger over the years. This would explain why the sandworm can use lightning miracles and even drops one of them. Although this theory is cool, I think that it's a bit of a stretch, since if you look closely at the sandworm, it's clearly made of multiple bodies. Also, I'm pretty sure that the official canon is that Solaire survives and links the fire in his world. But still, Solaire may just be one of the sandworm bodies. Sense Gate Skip This is a skip that can be performed on this staircase right before Sense Fortress. If you parry this hollow in a very specific location, a piece of your character model touches an out-of-bounds kill box. This activates Defcam without killing your character. Walking in Defcam allows you to walk through closed gates, allowing you to skip ringing the Bells of Awakening and enter Sen's Fortress before killing Quillac or Gargoyles. Oscar and Shiva's cut quest lines. Shiva is an NPC found in Darkroot Garden. From the cut dialogue we can assume that originally he was looking for the Chaos Blade. If the player would bring the blade to him, Shiva would try to kill the player and steal the blade. If the player was killed, he would have a chance to invade Shiva and take the blade, just like you can do to Lotrek. Oscar, however, was supposed to play a bigger role. He was supposed to survive the Undead Asylum and later be a summonable character in Anor Londo and Darkroot Garden, but in the end he would turn against you and side with one of the primordial serpents that the player didn't choose, killing bosses from outside their arenas. Most of the game's bosses can be cheesed in some way, some can even be killed from outside of their arenas. Capra, for example, can be killed with firebombs. Sif can also be killed from outside of his arena with bow. Please don't do this. Also, menace. Basilisks have tiny eyes. The big eyes of basilisks aren't their actual eyes. We don't know what they are, but if we took inspiration from real life, they could possibly be used to scare away the predators. The actual eyes are much smaller. Cut lower undead berg shortcut. There is a shortcut that was cut from development that connected Firelink Shrine to Undead Berg, specifically the Capra Demon boss fight. A YouTube user named Dropoff was able to restore the original files and recreate the shortcut. Infinite Soft Humanity Glitch. This is not strictly a glitch, but more of an exploit that can be performed in Duke's archives. After you escape from Sif's prison, every time you warp into the archives, the first hollow that you kill will give you a soft humanity. This originally was programmed in to compensate the player for having to die during the first Sif boss fight. This exploit will function infinitely until you kill Sif. Dragon Bat's huge aggro range. There once was a bug that gave Dragon Bats in Lost Isolith an insane aggro range that would trigger before the player was even able to properly see the enemy. 
However, this bug was quickly patched. Halberd Sweet Spots. This is a mechanic used in Dark Souls 2, which makes the tip of halberd weapons deal extra damage if you manage to precisely hit the enemy with it. However, this mechanic is not used in Dark Souls 1, instead halberds deal more damage if they connect with the enemy late in the attack animation. Skeletons giving no souls. Skeletons will only give souls when they are permanently killed. This means that the skeletons controlled by necromancers or Nito will not give you any souls when they are killed. Jeremiah is the parasitic wall hugger. There are some hints that connect these two characters. First of all, Jeremiah's headpiece looks like it could perfectly hide the wall hugger inside. Second of all, the parasitic wall hugger is called Prince Isalis in the game files, and we know that Jeremiah was a king of an unknown land called Xanthus, which could as well be located somewhere near Isalif or just be another name for Isalif. We know for sure that Jeremiah had at least some connection to Isalif because he can use Chaos Pyromancies. And lastly, Jeremiah fights with a whip and pyromancy spells, and near the parasite's body you can find exactly a whip and a pyromancy spell. I don't think that Jeremiah is the parasitic wallhugger, it's much more plausible that Jeremiah is the father to the person who became the wallhugger, an exiled king infected with the same parasite. Artorias and Quillac have dialogues. Originally, Artorias was supposed to speak to you during his boss fight. His dialogues would suggest that he was not completely consumed by the abyss. Whatever thou art, stay away. Ah, Sif, there you are. <laughs> All of you, forgive me. Quillac's cut dialogues suggest that at some point of development she was supposed to be a covenant leader ordering you to bring her some sacrifices. A precious new sacrifice, forbidden be these parts, the realm of the creatures of chaos. Give yourself to Quelag's flame. Ornstein is an illusion. This theory states that Ornstein left a fragment of his soul behind and left Anor Londo to look for Gwyn's firstborn son. So, the Ornstein we fight in Dark Souls 1 is an illusion created by Gwyndolin. This theory could be further proved by the fact that you only get one humanity after the Smoke and Ornstein boss fight, Ornstein's unnatural growth after consuming Smoke's power, and also meeting the real Ornstein in Dark Souls 2, where he presumably looks for the Nameless King. But of course the time is convoluted, and this could be a completely different character. Poop walking. I'm gonna cite Speed Souls wiki on this one. Poopwalk is a glitch in Dark Souls with the animation blending system, which effectively halves the distance traveled during all animations, but not their speed. This glitch is obviously named after the way your character looks when walking. And while being silly looking, it has many applications in game. It can allow you to clip through certain walls with ladders and kill some bosses through their fog gate. Calamit is not a cyclops. Just like basilisks, Calamit has two quite normal eyes. Frumped and Calf are the same being. This theory states that the two primordial serpents are actually the same being or two heads connected to one creature, similarly to the Hydras. This theory is mainly supported by the fact that they look identical, are voiced by the same actor and they both try to manipulate you into fighting Gwyn, which is supposed to be a part of a greater plan. This is a fairly complicated theory, but an interesting one, and if I wanted to get into all the details it would just take too much time, so I'll link a great reddit post that explains this one much better. Havel is not the person trapped inside the tower. This theory suggests that the man you fight in Watchtower basement is not really Havel. On one hand, we know that the person in the tower was locked there by a dear friend for their own good, which would fit Gwyn locking Havel inside because Havel has gone hollow from fighting Sif. Also, Havel's shield and dragon tooth should be one of a kind weapons that only Havel himself wielded. On the other hand, another set of those weapons can be found in a chest in Anor Londo, and the person we fight in the tower drops Havel's ring, which was given to his followers and not worn by Havel himself. Item Burden still exists. Dark Souls actually has a maximum item burden, and it is set to the value of 10,000, which is so high that no one would ever reach it during regular playthroughs. An Orlando Spiral no backstab mechanic. You cannot backstab or repost other players or enemies while standing on An Orlando's Spiral staircase. 
This is also the case for all other movable surfaces like Sands Fortress elevators, Duke's Archives rotating stairs and so on. Butchers are female. Butchers in the depths are in fact female and this has been confirmed by Mr. Miyazaki himself. Crack spiders rare attack. Crack spiders have a rare attack which they will perform if you stay still behind their back. The spider lays a fiery egg that deals damage for a short period of time. PS3 bugged Miracle Resonance Ring. Miracle Resonance is a nowadays rare mechanic in Dark Souls which boosts the effects of some miracles in places in the world where other players have used those miracles. This is represented by a white resonance ring. When the game first came out the mechanic worked fine on PC and Xbox, but not on PS3 where signs were appearing in places where they shouldn't be appearing or wouldn't appear at all. Nowadays you can find one bugged resonance ring in Darkwood Forest on PlayStation 3. Boulder lever moving on its own. Uh, the boulder lever in Sense Fortress most likely has some triggers invisible to player that make it rotate back to the staircase that you are coming from. Child Witch Beatrice. Uh, this is a younger version of another character called Witch Beatrice. The model is never used in game even though it's almost fully animated. Tarkus did not die by gravity. So you can see Tarkus's corpse in the Anor Londo Cathedral, so at first it seems obvious that he fell down from the rafters. However, not everything adds up. For example, the crestfallen merchant states that many heroes failed on their quest to get to Anor Londo, Tarkus being one of them. Also, it wouldn't make sense for him to die in Anor Londo rafters after getting through much harder challenge of Sense Fortress. Lastly, his corpse is not directly under any of the rafters. Mm, there were also some speculations that he could have just left his armor behind. Personally, I think that this theory is a stretch and Tarkus simply fell down to his death. Visiting the town under Firelink. There is a small unnamed town that you can see from Firelink Shrine. It's mostly composed of reused assets from Undead Berg, but it also adds some new ones. Anyway, you cannot access this town by any normal means, to get there you would have to use developer tools. Bear Armor This bear armor set was cut in early development as it didn't fit aesthetic of the game. World Tendency still exists. World Tendency is a mechanic from Demon Souls that changes the strength of enemies and modifies NPC encounters. This mechanic is in some way transferred to Dark Souls through Gravelord Covenant. The Gravelord servants can curse other players' worlds, which will cause additional stronger enemies to appear in the cursed worlds. Quailana used Rapport on Laurentius. At some point during the Laurentius quest, he goes to Blighttown and meets with Quailana. After that, we find him hostile towards us and supposedly hollow. However, contrary to most characters, Laurentius did not have a good reason to go hollow as he just managed to reach Blind Town where he would meet with Quailana. Other characters go hollow because of idleness or mad pursuit of knowledge, but Laurentius just met with her new teacher, so he should be quite happy about that. And the possible explanation of him being hostile towards us is that Quailana used undead report on him a unique pyromancy that lets her control undead. While Quailana using the spell on Laurentius is possible, I don't know why she would turn him against us if she wants us to kill the Bed of Chaos. Sparing Sif Sif is the best boy. He is not only protecting his master's grave, but also protecting Q from following Artorias' path. In the early days of the game, there were rumors that you could have an option to spare him by joining the Forest Hunter's Covenant and getting to the point in the Fai where he would start limping. Sadly, all of the rumors were false and there is no way to beat the game without killing him, and the only way to spare Sif is to never finish the game. Nito's third coffin It would seem that Nito has two coffins in his lair, one that he sits in all of the time and the smaller one on the side which has been theorized to belong to Pinwheel. But actually, there is a third coffin, hidden just behind your line of sight, right here. Let's adjust the brightness a bit, and there it is. Why is it crammed in the back like this, and who did it belong to? I have no idea, and I haven't really seen any discussion regarding that, so it shall remain a mystery for now. Gaping Dragon was in Blighttown. Gaping Dragon supposedly climbed up to the depths from Blighttown through a big round room near the lowest Blighttown bonfire. According to the theory, this room is right below his lair in the depths and that is where he climbs up from during his cutscene. 
Oh, and you can also find dragon scale in this room, which makes the theory much more plausible. Ghost footsteps. Ghost footsteps can be heard in some of the level's ambient sounds. Also, sometimes the sound of your character's footsteps can get out of sync with the animation and end a second or two after you stop running, creating an eerie sound. Competitive PvP with a prize pool. There was some discussion about competitive Dark Souls, however the game's PvP is too imbalanced, has too many inconsistencies and the servers are never reliable enough to provide a competitive experience. However, there are some players who create their own little tournaments with prices, like this guy who made a PvP tournament with a $20 prize pool. The biggest instance of Dark Souls tournament that I was able to find was the Tryhard Meta Inventational in Dark Souls 3 with a $500 prize pool. Hellkite Drake on the Aqueduct. This is one of the promotional pictures released before the game came out. It takes place in front of the aqueduct that you use to enter the Undead Burg, right after leaving Firelink Shrine. Obviously, a lot of changes have been made since this image was released. The drake is red, not blue, the aqueduct has two levels and this whole scene was cut from the game. Broken Arch Tree from Ash Lake was a portal to Boletaria. Now we are entering Deep Lore Speculation Zone. So the arch trees are theorized to hold different worlds. One arch tree holds one world. When we enter Ash Lake, we can see that one of the arch trees is destroyed, which could mean that the world it was holding was at some point destroyed too. This world could be Boletaria, since Demon's Souls is somewhat of a prequel or at least an inspiration for Dark Souls. And now the tinfoil hat version of this theory. The tree in Ash Lake is broken. You know what else is broken? The sixth arch stone in the Nexus. It was supposed to teleport us to Lordran, but the tree was destroyed during the war with gods, and that's why we can't use it. Andre moving Firelink statue. Andre, as many other characters, was supposed to play a much bigger role of being the descendant of Gwyn. Originally, he was supposed to help you enter the Kiln of the First Flame instead of Frampt. He would move the statue in the Firelink Church, which would reveal the entrance to the Kiln. This was cut from the game, but concept art and in-game files still remain. Killing Kalamit without Gauth's help. With enough skill, you can kill Kalamit without Gauth's help. This is usually performed by shooting him with a bow while covering yourself with a shield and this process usually takes half an hour. However, I was able to find a much more impressive display of skill by Kamul78, who killed the dragon in just two minutes. Try Wings. Try Wings was a soapstone message that players were living in the air, obviously confusing other players. This was achieved with glitches or hacks. This phrase was also used near cliffs to troll new players into thinking that they will get an item that lets them fly later in the game. Havel is the Stone Dragon. This is actually one of my favorite series and I won't be able to do it justice in this video, so if you want to read it in full, I'll leave a link to a Reddit thread about it. But anyway, here is the short version of it. Havel, seeing Sif's vile experiments, decides to kill him. He speaks about this with Gwyn, but Gwyn does not want to hear about this and banishes him. Havel, who is led by hatred towards Sif and magic, travels to Ash Lake where he hopes to find power that would help him in his quest. He is the first human to reach this place, so he accumulates large number of dragon scales and uses them to become the stone dragon. This theory sounds like a huge stretch at first, but if we look at certain item descriptions, it actually starts to make a lot of sense. First of all, we know that Havel was a bishop who created spells that would shield humans from magic. His most powerful spell, Great Magic Barrier, can be found in Ash Lake, right in front of the stone dragon. Second of all, the weapon that we acquire from cutting the dragon's tail says that this dragon is not an ancient dragon, but their descendant. Finally, the name Stone Dragon, Havel the Rock, Stone, Rock. Havel wore armor made of stone. We know that dragon apostles can turn into dragons. Havel uses dragon's tooth, which is originally called dragon's horn, and the stone dragon is missing its horn. I truly believe that the stone dragon is actually Havel the Rock. Yulia is the female undead merchant. The male undead merchant mentions Yulia, which most players believe to be his sword, the Uchigatana. 
However, there exists a theory that Yulia is the name of the undead female merchant who he kept in a barrel. Yulia supposedly escaped and the guy is insane enough to still keep talking to her. This sounds crazy, but there may be some truth to it, since he can be seen stroking an invisible being over the barrel, something that he definitely wouldn't do to a sword. Fourth Asylum Demon Reskin this refers to an unused Asylum Demon reskin that was originally placed in the painted world in the early stages of game development, when this location served the purpose of testing grounds for developers. Forest Covenant NPCs are real players. I don't know about this one, I spent a lot of time researching this point and looking for some crazy theories about players standing idly in one place and pretending to be NPCs and I didn't find anything and now I feel kind of stupid. The only thing that I was able to find are all the blog posts of confused players who entered the Darkwood Forest for the first time and thought that they were invaded by real players while actually being attacked by the NPC hunters. Blight Town Luck is the intended experience. This one is obviously just a joke, suggesting that From Software made Blight Town, one of the hardest and most annoying locations in the game, harder by making it laggy. We know for a fact that it wasn't the intended experience because the lag was fixed in the remaster. 12 Kings Boss Battle. If you spend enough time in the 4 Kings Boss Battle arena, eventually more than 4 Kings will spawn. 12 is the highest possible number of Kings at the same time. Sen is the Crystal Knight. First we have to establish that the Crystal Knight is theorized to actually be Adas, the craftsman who created Avalon. This can be deduced from similarities between the pattern designs on Crystalline Armor set and the Avalon. The second proof is the fact that we can find him in Duke's archives and there are more similarities between Avalon's designs and the Duke's archives architecture. So perhaps Adas was not only a craftsman but also an architect who was working on the archives before he went hollow. Now knowing that Adas was a great architect we can assume that he was the one who designed Sen's fortress. If he was able to construct the intricate mechanisms of Avalon he surely would be able to create the traps in the fortress. Also, Avalon shoots three bolts in a row. You know what else shoots three bolts in a row? This theory is obviously a huge stretch and only exists because we don't know about any other craftsmen or architects in the game. Using Priscilla to level up. Priscilla was originally supposed to play the role similar to the role of Black Maiden or the Emerald Herald. She was supposed to be present in the Firelink Shrine through the whole game, giving you advice and leveling you up. However, this idea was later scrapped. Grix is a spy sent to kill Logan. When you look closely at the character of Grix, you can notice some shady things about him. When you meet him, he is supposedly trapped in a room from which he could easily escape because he is a powerful sorcerer. Then he won't let you know why is he so interested in Logan. From item descriptions we know that he specializes in sound magic, something perfect for a spy. So perhaps Griggs was sent to spy on Logan by his school and maybe kill him if he became too dangerous. The author of this iceberg said that he made up most of the stuff in this tier, but it won't stop me from researching these anyway. But first we still need to get some bullshit ones out of the way. Haunted copy. F*** off. 7 undiscovered illusory walls. At this point in the game every wall has been hit thousands of times, we have map explorer, so there is no way that there are any more undiscovered illusory walls. Pendant unlocks second quest. It doesn't, although for some of the players looking for the pendant's use was the second quest. People used to spend time hitting every wall in the game, talking to NPCs and playing the game through multiple new game cycles with pendant in their inventory, just to see what would happen, but nothing ever did. The item, as we now know, has no other use than trading it to Snuggly for a souvenir of reprisal, and it was designed as a prank by Miyazaki. Invading Firelink Shrine. There is no way to invade other players in Firelink Shrine, sorry. Battle of Stoicism is a p ring. I mean, I guess it could be. Hardly anyone ever goes there, so it technically could be used to transfer some cryptic messages through gestures, possibly concerning illegal stuff. Time is not convoluted. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers and relations shift and obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. 
So this line by Soler is often considered to explain the convoluted timeline of the games. However, we can theorize that this line is only meant to explain the multiplayer aspects of the game, like summoning, invasions or soapstones. Since the game came out, part of the community dedicated itself to uncover the whole story of Dark Souls, including its timeline. And as it turns out, most if not all of the events can be placed somewhere in the timeline, so we can actually assume that time is not convoluted, but our knowledge about certain events is. True pacifist run. This is a Dark Souls let's play made by Soul the Cleric, and I have to say it is one of the most amazing things regarding the game that I have ever seen. The guy was able to beat the whole game without ever attacking. He achieved this using summons, glitches, exploits and a ton of skill. I highly recommend you check out the series. FEG Shield contest was rigged. Before the game came out, From Software organized a shield design contest. The winner was FEG Shield and it was decided by a Facebook poll. It was like 10 years ago and it's really hard to find any information about this. But from what I was able to find, the winner of the contest was suspected of using bots to give him fake votes on the poll. Velka is the corpse in the asylum. Velka is strongly connected to the Kraus, as we know from Painted World of Ariamis, so we can further assume that she is connected to Snuggly, the crow that transports us from Undead Asylum to Firelink. And according to this theory, the crow was actually supposed to save Velka from the asylum and not the chosen undead. But Velka died and she is one of the corpses in the asylum. Grass Crest Shield is a placebo. I am quite lost on this one. I can only assume that this refers to the stamina regeneration effect of Grass Crest Shield being so minor that it becomes irrelevant, thus making it a placebo. But I am not sure that this is what the author of the iceberg meant, so let me know in the comments if you have any other ideas. Reverse Boss Order True reverse boss order is not possible without cheats. Asylum Demon has to be the first boss that you fight and Gwyn has to be the last. However, between these two there is a lot of freedom. For example, if you play correctly, the first boss in Lordran that you kill could be Sif, and the last one before Gwyn could be Taurus Demon. Ashlake Skull Identity the shape of this skull doesn't quite fit any known creature in the Dark Souls universe. Some people think it's a deformed dragon skull. Some people think that it's a skull that belongs to a demon. There is one bigger theory about the skull belonging to Blacksmith of the Gods from the excellent Hawkshox video. But in the end we will never be sure. And that is all. If you want more videos like that, make a good iceberg and send it to me. Thank you for watching.